I'm Pamela Brown in Washington. Welcome to our viewers in the United States and around the world on this Sunday. You are live in the CNN newsroom. A year ago, the pandemic was just getting started in the U.S. I'm sure we all remember how we felt at that time. And spring breakers were largely oblivious to its threats. You can't say people don't know better now, though. But spring break still looks a lot like it always has, starting at the nation's airports. Even though the CDC says we should still avoid travel, the TSA screened more than 1.2 million people on Saturday. In Miami Beach, the streets are packed with largely mask-free tourists, despite the fact that Florida currently leads the nation in cases of the highly contagious UK variant. If you aren't wearing a mask, like that's kind of the normal compared to people who do wear a mask. But it's kind of nice to just kind of be out and just not have to worry about it. I mean, when we do get back, we are going to have to quarantine, but like it's nice for just these two weeks to just kind of, you know, let, let that weight off your shoulders and just kind of have a good time. Well, the pandemic is far from over. Yesterday alone, 1,846 deaths. The New York Times puts the seven-day average at roughly 1,400 COVID deaths a day. And this just into CNN tonight, the Netherlands has paused the use of the AstraZeneca vaccine because of, quote, new information. The Dutch government says it is a precautionary measure pending further investigation, and it joins Ireland as the latest two nations suspending the use of this vaccine. Earlier today, AstraZeneca issued a statement insisting there is no evidence of blood clot risks from its vaccine. And the company is still awaiting approval from the FDA for emergency use authorization in the U.S. CNN Cyril Vignier has more on the controversy. Pam, more than a third of European countries have now partially or fully suspended AstraZeneca vaccinations. Ireland becoming the latest EU member state to do so on Sunday after a report from the Norwegian Health Authority of patients developing blood clots after inoculation. Concerns have been emerging throughout the week. EU countries reported three deaths and multiple incidents. A 49-year-old woman in Austria died as a result of blood coagulation, and several countries banned that particular batch of AstraZeneca doses. Then Denmark went a step further, suspending its entire AstraZeneca rollout for two weeks after a vaccine recipient died of a blood clot. Norway and Iceland immediately followed suit. It is important to note those countries acknowledge there is no proof these incidents are connected to the vaccine, but they want more information. Meanwhile, a majority of European countries, including Germany, Spain and France, are proceeding with the rollout. AstraZeneca has responded. It says that the data from more than 10 million vaccine recipients shows no evidence of increased risk of pulmonary embolism or deep vein thrombosis for any age group, gender or country. And the European Medicines Agency seems to agree. It says the number of such events in vaccinated people is no higher than that seen in the general population. The EMA is investigating the incidents, but advises that in the meantime, the vaccines can continue to be used. Pam? All right, thanks so much to Cyril. And joining me now with more is Dr. Suju Matthew, primary care physician. Um, AstraZeneca insists, doctor, that its vaccine is safe, as we just heard there, even as Ireland and just today the Netherlands joined the list of countries suspending it. Do you think the U.S. should approve it for emergency use authorization? Uh, good evening, Pamela. Nice to be on your show. Listen, when you start vaccinating, hundreds and thousands of people, you are going to find some of these events. Now, it doesn't necessarily mean that there's a direct cause and effect. We had a couple of these events happen in some of the vaccines that were approved here in the US. And to answer your question, Pamela, more specifically, one thing that gives me a lot of consolation as an American physician is our FDA is a very strict organization. When the data is presented to them, they will go through it and make sure that it is safe and effective like they have already for the three vaccines we have currently in the U.S. So you, you don't think that this latest, uh, what's coming out about uh, people's reactions after taking the vaccine is enough to prevent the U.S. from emergency youth author authorization as you see it now, right? Right, that's correct, Pamela. And again, it's because, you know, these blood clots happen quite a bit anyway in a normal population. And when you're vaccinating people, you're going to find out that some of these people that got vac vaccinated also have blood clots, but it doesn't mean that the vaccination actually caused the blood clot. 
So former FDA Commissioner Scott Gottlieb spoke today about uh, concerns related to a New York uh, mutation that seems similar to the South African variant. Let's listen to what he said. And New York is really the only place in the country right now that we know of where it's 1526 is that much of the infection. And about half of those cases, so half of the cases of 1526, have the same mutation that's in the South African variant, this 484K mutation that could make the virus more impervious to our vaccines. So it is a concern. We also are seeing in it with the 1351, the South African variant, with this same 484K mutation, we're seeing people get reinfected. And so whether or not that started to happen in New York and that explains these trends we don't know yet. So what does that mean practically for all of us as we're getting the vaccine or waiting to get it? If a variant spreads more easily, may cause reinfection and is resistant to current vaccines, how dangerous could that be? Yeah, so Pamela, I hope that the key word that you just said will not happen, which is resistance to the vaccine. We already know that the approved vaccines here in the US, Moderna, Pfizer, and the Johnson & Johnson, they will work on these variants, but they may not work at the efficacy that we would like for it to. They're still gonna be effective. They will work also on the vile strains, which are the strains that are circulating right now in the US. So I don't think we need to be concerned about the current vaccine. Vaccines. Now, this is the, also the reason, Pamela, that we are going to be develop these uh, vaccines that will work specifically against the variants. So I think in the near future, uh, everybody that gets one or two shots will probably end up getting a booster. But we still have to mask up and get vaccinated. And that's the way that we can take care of these variants. But you have vaccine hesitancy. I mean, your doctor in Georgia just this week, Governor Brian Kemp said he has seen vaccine hesitancy among white Republicans in the southern part of the state. What is your reaction to that? Yeah, it, it definitely makes me a bit upset because I also feel that, you know, President Trump, whether you like him or not, had a golden opportunity to talk about uh, getting the vaccine when he and the former first lady got it before they left the White House. He has a huge following, and I definitely think that a lot of white Republicans will listen to him. Listen, at the end of the day, Pamela, we've still got a lot of work to do. We've got to work on minority populations. 67% of the, of our white people have gotten the vaccine, but only six to seven percent, Pamela, of the black population have gotten the shot. So we've got a lot of work to do. And I think that talking about it, answering a lot of questions, I do that all the time as a doctor, we will definitely be able to overcome that to a, to a degree. But are you concerned, given the vaccine hesitancy and the numbers you just laid out, that there is a scenario where the U.S. doesn't reach herd immunity um, in the amount of time that is necessary to prevent a resurgence of the pandemic? There's always that possibility, right? As scientists, we're always very careful to say that, hey, if 85% of Americans get the vaccine, we are going to get to herd immunity. One thing that's reassuring is the fact that we have about 100 million people that have already gotten COVID. So we do have some natural immunity that will go towards that herd immunity. And now we have about 15% of the US population fully vaccinated, that's another 100 million people. So I still think we should be positive. We're getting there, but I don't want people to think because the numbers are coming down that there's no need to get the vaccine. All right, Dr. Matthew, thank you for coming on the show and sharing your expertise with us.